Welcome back, everyone, to Max Loserman's One Painful Year. As we approach summer, things are starting to look up for Max. Let's see if he can keep it going. On day 151, it was back on the slow drive up to West Point. Once in West Point, I made my way to the ambulance I spotted earlier. I wanted to check to see if it was functional so we could potentially do a siren burn. Unsurprisingly, the area was a bit full of zombies, so I used the office building that was on fire the next block over to start the zombies burning. I spent most of the afternoon burning out the locals. Once the fire was out, I was able to finally check the ambulance. Sadly, it had no gas and no battery, so using it for anything will have to wait until Max learns mechanics level 2 and can start hot wiring cars. I retreated to our safe spot in West Point for the night as it was too late to drive home. In the morning of day 152, I worked my way over to the hardware store in downtown West Point. The burn from the previous day had cleared the area enough that I could get in with minimal zombie interference. The hardware store was sadly not that great. I was able to source a few more boxes of nails and some wood glue, but all in all it was a bit underwhelming. I also took the time to check about half the motel just north of the ambulance for anything interesting. I didn't find much. In the evening I made the slow drive back to the crossroads base. The next morning I headed down the road towards Dixie to do some mechanics practice on some of the cars there. I had damaged most of the cars up by our base enough that they weren't super useful anymore. I had to fight a few zombies on the way. I lost track of time while doing the mechanics training and I had to make my way all the way back home in the dark. The next day was another one spent entirely on mechanics. I was pumping it hard to try to get to level 2, as it would open up a lot of avenues in the game. I should point out here that I'm using a mod that automates a lot of the mechanics training. Critically, it doesn't speed up any of it. The jobs still take the normal amount of in-game time. It just lets me use less of my real one human lifetime by automating the clicks. On day 155, I returned to West Point and fought my way into the police station in town. There was not much I needed from there, but looting the police station is always just a thing you have to do in a zombie game. I came away with some ammunition and a handful of dead zombies by the end of the day. That night, Max stayed in West Point. The next morning, I pushed slightly away from downtown to look at the nearby neighborhoods. I discovered a crashed ambulance here and wanted to check it for usefulness. It was also missing gas and battery. The zombie population here was also a bit too high for my current tastes, so I headed back home in the afternoon. Day 157 was all mechanics again. That is until the afternoon when the helicopter showed up. I attempted to hide in the car dealership, but the guy didn't want to leave and hung around until late in the evening. The next morning the weather was terrible. What was also terrible was my discovery that we weren't as remote as I thought. A number of zombies had wandered into the area following the previous day's helicopter. I spent the day cleaning up the zombies and had to re-barricade one of the windows in the afternoon due to zombie damage. The zombie situation mostly handled, I spent the next several days grinding mechanics for experience. On day 161, I finally hit level 2 mechanics, which combined with my level and electronics allowed me to hotwire cars. I immediately hotwired the one good quality car in the parking lot and took it home. On day 162, I wanted to go get the good quality car and the RV from down around Dixie. I was thwarted in both attempts. The RV because there doesn't seem to be a way to get in through one of the broken windows, so I can't get inside to drive it. The car because I had forgotten that I stole the battery out of it ages ago. And it's hard to drive a car without a battery. The next day I returned to the car with a battery in hand and brought it back to the base. I also started to plan for the siren burn I wanted to do up in West Point by making three campfire materials and sourcing the truck battery I would need to install in the ambulance. The whole process was probably going to take several days in the making, but I had my sights set on making it happen. The following day I returned to West Point and the ambulance. I installed the fresh truck battery and a bit of gas and moved the ambulance so its front was flush with the other car in the parking lot. Next I placed the three campfires around the truck and added the fuel logs I had brought with me. In order to protect the siren from being destroyed by zombies, you need to block the front of the truck. I like to block the driver's side of the truck just to be sure. I've always been unclear if this is necessary or not to protect the siren, but I do it anyways. To that end, I needed another vehicle, so I went over to the church parking lot to steal another truck for the driver's side blocker. At that point, I had to retreat to our forward base to sleep and dream of a burning tomorrow. The big burn day did not go according to plan. It started out well enough. I had to fight through a few zombies to make it back to the ambulance, but that wasn't too bad. 
Once the fires had been set, I jumped into the ambulance and started the siren. I then retreated to a safe-ish distance. Occasionally a passing zombie would head towards Max, but the vast majority went to the ambulance like I wanted them to. Pretty soon a bunch of zombies were burning around it. I took the opportunity to cheese a level or so of sneaking and light-footed, but I didn't want to go crazy with it. These skills gain XP points by zombies being close to you but not aware of you, making a large siren burn a great place to cheese the XP. Once it seemed like most of the local zombies had joined the fire, I decided to step away from the ambulance to collect and bring back more zombies. This is where things started to go off the rails. Heading north towards the Gigamart, I started collecting zombies when an alarm at Twiggy's bar went off. I was then surprised to see zombies from the ambulance streaming north through the hotel towards Twiggy's. I thought the siren would keep them in place over the alarm. I desperately did not want the Gigamart to burn because of all the food inside. So I collected as many of the fire zombies as I could and moved them back to the ambulance. To my continued surprise, the siren was silent. Had they managed to break it despite my dual car protection? I would have to wait to answer the question, I had to protect the Gigamart. I spent most of the rest of the day collecting and burning the zombies around the Gigamart and Twiggies. I had to sacrifice Twiggies, but I was able to protect both the gun store and the Gigamart from burning down. What confused me more was when I returned to check the ambulance, the siren was still functional. Very strange. My working theory at this point was that only one type of siren type noise could be on at any time. The alarm at Twiggies turning off the siren on the ambulance. On day 166, since the siren was still functional, I decided to try again. I reset the fires and turned the siren back on. It wasn't a shock to me that the number of zombies showing up was substantially lower this morning. I again attempted to go fetch zombies from the surrounding area. This time I went straight up the main street into downtown to get zombies. When I brought them back, again the siren was off. I had no other choice but to burn the zombies in the normal way. In the afternoon after the zombies had all cooked, I checked again and the siren was still functional. My current theory is that when you leave the local chunk, the ambulance gets unloaded from the memory, and it sets the siren back to the off position when you return to the area. I'm not sure of why it works this way. I have memories of moving away from a siren and coming back to it still being online. Not sure when or why it changed. In the late afternoon, I poke my head into the Gigamart to look around. I don't loot much, as I'm planning to move here eventually. I return to the crossroads in the evening. After several busy days, I take day 167 easy just making a bit of stew and doing a few rounds of exercise. Day 168 is a bit more exercise and some carpentry, upgrading more of the ugly level 1 walls to look a little bit nicer. In the morning while doing exercise, I hit level 4 fitness, starting to get into the normal character range, if a bit on the low side. I spend most of the day ripping up various clothing hanging on the racks in the base. I then use the thread and the rags I've accumulated to practice Max's tailoring skill. I had noticed on my way back from West Point last time that the zombie population on the road was getting a bit too high, so I spent day 170 burning out the zombies that were making it hard for me to drive back and forth. Day 171 is a tale as old as time. Travel back to West Point and come across a random burning zombie. So of course, I have no choice but to take that burning zombie and spend the foggy day burning out a big chunk of the West Point's never-ending zombie population. Who hasn't heard that story before? After the zombies are gone, I go to check to see if the gun store burned down or not. I discover that it's even better than not burned down. It's slightly burned down in the most useful way. A side wall is burned without catching the rest of the building, so I can climb through it and into the store without having to get the sledgehammer involved. I didn't plan it that way, but I'll take it. I also discover a bunch of bourbon bottles in the back of a van in the Twiggy's parking lot. These will make starting fires easier in the future. I spend our first night in the Gigabart. I will definitely be moving here soon. As I'm getting a bit burned out on all the burns, I take my spears and head down towards the storage facility, killing zombies along the way. I'm able to make it inside the walls and loot a bit, but I don't find that much that is useful. Eventually the zombies are showing up faster than I can kill them, so I have to abandon ship and head back to the crossroads. 
The next day, I spend mostly doing tailoring practice and a bit of exercise. The helicopter arrives in the afternoon, and I attempt to just tank the zombie aggro by hiding in my base. The zombies that have shown up by the next morning are significant, but not overwhelming. So I spend most of the day clearing them out of the area a few at a time. I even break out the spiked baseball bat to do something a bit different from my trusty crowbar. I thought I had gotten them all, but there are more zombies around the next day that need dealing with. They take up most of the time of the day to clear them all out, but I do manage to make a bit of time for exercise in the evening. Day 176, I start preparing for our move to West Point. In the parking lot is a box truck with substantial storage, but it needs some sprucing up if it's going to work for moving. I take it down to the good RV near Dixie. It turns out a bunch of Zeds have moved into the area since I've been gone, so I have to group them up and move them out of the area into the trees. Once I make it back to the truck and kill a couple of persistent zombies, I go about taking the tires from the RV to put on the truck. The truck's tires were particularly bad, and blowing one during the trip would suck. The next day is spent loading all the stuff we have into the back of the truck. It takes a long time, but I'm honestly surprised about how much of our stuff I'm able to get into the truck in a single move. I thought I would have to make a bunch of trips, but it, but it turns out it should only have to be a couple. Day 178 is moving day. I grab the last few things and hop into the truck. Upon reaching the Gigamart, I dump all the garbage bags full of stuff on the ground. Filling the shelves will come later. I spend the afternoon working my way around the Gigamart, clearing out a few random zombies. Don't want anyone showing up while I'm trying to sleep to snack on Max's brains. He needs those. In the morning, I drive back to the crossroads base and spend the rest of the day filling the station wagon with junk. I'm actually surprised to discover that I can fit the antique oven in the car with us, so I won't have to try and source a new one of those at the Gigamart, which is nice. Day 180 is finally moving day. I drive back up to West Point and dump the stuff I brought. I then split my time during the rest of the day between killing some local zombies and putting the junk on shelves. The existing shelves are way better than anything Max can build, so I use those. The disorganized trait means Max has to spend the entirety of the following day shifting things around and putting them on shelves. Moving is never fun, but it's a thing you gotta do. Day 182. I didn't realize it when recording, but this is the halfway day for the whole painful year. Max spends it mostly killing zombies. I managed to make it up into a couple of the downtown apartments and attempt to disassemble the bed so I can take them back to the Gigamart. I'm tired of sleeping on a cot. Max isn't good enough at dismantling, though, and can't get all four pieces of any one given type of bed. He takes out his frustration later in the day by killing zombies that are encroaching a bit too close to the Gigamart. Afterwards, since it's raining, I break out the sledgehammer and make an exit onto the garage roof. I then build a couple of rain collectors up there so we can start getting some water. Day 183 is a construction day. I have to spend a bit of time in the morning killing a few Zeds, but then it's about making the place a bit safer. I build a wall over one of the doorways in the garage so I can put the antique oven there. Next I build another rain collector barrel, and a crate directly below them. It is here that I can install a sink and finally plumb it. This provides us with a convenient source of clean water going forward. For the final construction project of the day, I build a new door to go in place of the one that the zombies broke. The doorknob I used ends up not having a lock, so I'll need to replace this door at some point in the future. In the morning, a zombie is waiting for me in the garage when I come downstairs. After killing it, I have to spend a bit of time cleaning the room with bleach so that the blood doesn't cause Max's hemophobia to act up. I spend the rest of the day dismantling some stuff in the main room of the Gigamart and taking inventory of what's there. By day 185, I had recovered from my burn burnout and decided to do a burn this day to clear out the area around the nearby American Tire. It was a pretty standard burn. Collect them up, burn them out. Population was a bit higher than I expected, but nothing I couldn't handle at this point. Afterwards, I went in to loot the American Tire. Lots of auto parts available that I 
didn't currently have a use for. But I did collect a few flashlights that I hope to make use of in the future if I can find some rope. The next day I spent some time in downtown West Point, killing the occasional zombie but mostly working on my electrical XP dismantling a whole bunch of stuff in the kitchen of a restaurant. When I returned home, it was time to close off the garage door. So I got the wood that I needed and built a couple of walls and a door to close off the area. Much better than just parking the car in front of the gaping hole. Day 187 was a pretty basic one. I went out and killed a group of nearby zombies and, sp and spent the rest of the day shifting loot around the base. Hey, they can't all be winners. Day 188 was bombastic to say the least. I decided I wanted to do a burn with a little help from Mr. Shotgun. So I went out, tossed the Molotov, and got to work. Things got extra spicy part of the way through when the helicopter showed up. I wish I could say I'd planned it that way. But I'd been pretty lazy about checking the radio. I sadly lost the spiffos to the fire, but that's a pretty low price to pay for all the zombies killed. As the helicopters want to do, the zombie situation was a bit more shaken up going forward. I had to spend a bit of the morning clearing the area around the base, even hitting the next level of Long Blunt. But then I headed back to the scene of the crime to check the cars there. Sadly nothing useful. I made it into the nearby pharmacy, where I got a smattering of loot. Most notable of the loot was a bunch of vitamins, which I could use to take the edge off of the sleepiness Max always gets in the afternoon. I then had more zombie smashing to do on the way back to the base in the evening. During a period of time killing zombies the next day, I hit the next level of maintenance, and then quickly after the next level of spears. It was a good day for level ups, a bad day for zombie skulls. In the evening, I bring home a rug I stole from one of the downtown apartments, making the place feel a little bit more lived in. Day 191 I decided to do another burn, this one focusing on the northern bit of the city, and while collecting my way through a parking lot, I see what I'm pretty sure is a good quality truck sitting there. I'll have to return to check it out. I also passed by a barricaded house, so hopefully I can make it back there in the future. The morning of day 192 changed the course of the rest of the playthrough. While killing a few zombies near the base, I discovered that one of them was carrying an annotated map. The map contained information on a survivor base in the apartment building in March Ridge. This is one of the most valuable annotated maps you can find. By finding this map, the apartments in March Ridge have been converted into a barricaded base filled with loot. Normally I ignore March Ridge for the huge populations and substandard loot, but this map means I have to go there. So this has now become a long-term target for the playthrough. The rest of the day is spent killing zombies and looting buildings. I managed to get back to the truck and find that it is, in fact, excellent quality, so I take it with me. I also managed to get three out of the four pieces I need for a good quality bed. I remember seeing the missing piece at a different place we looted, so I take the pieces home. I'll get the other piece later. Later it turns out is the next morning as I go and fetch the missing bed piece from a house I'd looted earlier. As always, I have zombies to kill when I return to the base. But I'm able to put the bed together upstairs at the Gigamart. It's nice to finally have a fully functional bed and not just a cot. The good quality of the bed instead of just the average quality of the cot should help Max get a full night's sleep quicker. Although the sleepy head trait will most likely counteract that. On day 194, I looted my way through City Hall and the mechanic shop. Neither of the place had much use, but I did have a large number of zombies to kill throughout the day. Since moving to West Point, the amount of time I spend actively killing zombies has definitely gone up compared to our two previous remote bases. The next morning I decide I want one of our good quality cars back that I left at the previous base, so I had Max walk all the way back to the crossroads to fetch it. 
Probably wasn't worth the effort, but I wanted it anyways. Once back at base, I had to kill a few zombies to keep the area clean. I spent day 196 just looting my way through West Point. I found some food, some electronics items to dismantle. I also found some zombies that needed killing. The best thing I found on the day was some rope. This allowed me to finally build what I wanted, which is a flashlight on a pole. I put it in our main room so that I could have a bit of light for a change. I also rebuilt both of the main doors into the base with doorknobs I could lock this time. No longer can zombies just let themselves in. I mean, assuming I remember to lock the doors. I spent day 197 making the base a whole lot safer. I cut down and sawed a number of logs, then used the wood to seal over the two unused entrances to the core part of the base. I then used more of the wood to barricade the windows on the Gigamart. I had to change Max's clothes in the morning. We were reaching the end of June and his all leather outfit was starting to bake him during the day. I switched back to just jeans and a shirt. Hopefully it won't lead to his end. I just have to not get hit. Then protection doesn't matter. I barricade the rest of the base and in the evening set out all of our stuffed animals. I'm very disappointed in myself that I forgot to do this for so long. Day 199, I spent acquiring another of the big trucks over by the church. It was in pretty poor condition, but it might come in handy if and when I decide to travel back over to March Ridge area to assault the apartments. A tropical storm hit on day 200, so I spent the day finally planting some crops in the area. Not really sure why I waited so long, but it's nice to get things growing again. 